How to build a rectangular waveguide in Fusion 360. Um, I'm just going to kind of do this real time as fast as I can um, and you guys should be able to pick up a lot of useful things hopefully if you're not already a Fusion whiz otherwise you could probably figure this out yourself but um, yeah I'll just go ahead and do this in real time but I'll show you real quick um, a completed one um, so here's one of the waveguides I made uh, in Fusion uh, in the sketches um, that were used to make it uh, so that's kind of what we're doing but I'm going to do a little more basic of one just for this demonstration uh, and I'll show the more complex stuff at a later time hopefully so I'm going to start a sketch and again I'm just going to go real time for you show you what I'm doing um, enter the height I'm going to enter half the width Uh, I'm going to turn my origin off. Use the move, to, uh, move and copy tool. And hopefully it gave me the option to copy. Did. I'm going to move this up half the height of the waveguide that I want. Uh, I'm done there. Now I'm going to do rectangle. And this plane for my vertical that's all there oh one more thing there I like to draw a line inside of this sketch connecting those two points okay now one more sketch I'm gonna draw a diagonal line from here to here um, and I like to make that a construction line. Now I'm going to draw a circle or a quarter circle for the throat of my waveguide. Uh, I like to use a center point arc for this. Uh, it just helps when you're doing more complex stuff later. Uh, you can use other tools to do this as well. So I'll go ahead and make an arc from there to the diagonal, and from the diagonal to there. Uh, and then one more thing in here, I'm going to connect these points here. I'll finish there. I need to make a plane. I'm going to use plane through two edges to make a diagonal plane here. I'm going to draw a sketch on that rectangle tool again finish. Okay, I am ready to start drawing in um, my curves here. So I usually start with the diagonal curve and you'll see why in a second. Let me open my sketches here and turn off what I don't need. So I'm going to start a sketch and I'm going to select that face. Um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm going to use the spline tool, connect those two points. Um, and to cut out some variables, I'm just going to make this top edge tangent um, flat with the baffle face here. So I'm going to use the tangent constraint to do that. Um, now before you go and manipulate these curves at all, it's really important that you're looking straight at the plane you're manipulating at, um, manipulating it in. Um, otherwise you can move it in 3D space. So use the look at tool. Uh, it'll square you up. And now I can go in and change the angle of this guy without having it go off in 3D space on me. Um, so you'd want this to be tangent with the exit angle of your compression driver. Uh, and you can draw a line in to help you and use the tangent tool again uh, to constrain that and force it to always be tangent. Um, if you want. I'm not going to for this. Okay, so next one I like to do is my horizontal curve. I'm going to go on a little bit of an angle. Start a sketch here. Just so I can make sure I'm selecting the right points. Um, I'm going to make this tangent again. To there. Again, I'm going to square myself up. So 
sometimes you have to double click and use the move function there um, and drag that up now the reason I do the diagonal curve first is so I can see it um, and reference it when I'm drawing the horizontal goal, horizontal and vertical Wow um, and I made a mistake in my diagonal curve because it actually needs to be way lower than that okay and when I go in for this guy uh, you can see it's the horizontal is going in front of the vertical so it's going to kind of give it that uh, spherical shape to the waveguide uh, that the JBL um, waveguides typically have um, so now I'll go in and do the vertical start another sketch here um, use a spline get out of my way tangent tool uh, I'm going to square myself up uh, and again match the angle or exit angle of your compression driver um, and set yourself up like so and then all of this you'll go back and optimize later um, or you can use reasonable guesses to get you close from the get-go but um, so at this point we're ready to actually loft um, and make this into surfaces so go to your surface tool loft um, and I usually loft in this direction whoops Uh, because you can go from here to here sometimes um, but if you've got really complex curves it needs to follow sometimes that can be a problem um, and I'm going to use the rails tool here I'm going to select um, that curve there that line there and just do the same thing again Where is it? There it is. Okay. Now at this point you're ready to, uh, if you're going to manufacture, you can use this model, just mirror it around um, and add whatever you need uh, for your manufacturing, whether you're uh, going to 3D print or use a CNC router or something. Um, but I'm going to simulate this so I'm going to add a few more things uh, so I went into my patch tool and uh, I'm going to select this surface and I'm going to use that to drive the horn in Acabac uh, for simulations so I'll click on that and get it out of my sketches for a minute and stitch this all together there we go now it's one body um, and then the other thing I need to do for Acabac is make an interface. So I'm just going to loft the surface there. And under the solid tools, I'm going to go to the move, move it up an inch. It doesn't have to be an inch, but that's just easy. Uh, back to my surface tools actually before I do that I'm gonna reverse normals of this guy because um, I know it has to be that direction later okay uh, turn off the sketches and one more loft like that okay now we can go in um, and weld the whole thing together again so we can export it as a step file. We can mesh it in GMesh um, here and import it to Acabac, have it solve it, and we can do the simulation, uh, see what's up with the frequency response, then go back to Fusion and make a tweak. This is all set up on a timeline. So if you go back to the beginning into one of these sketches, um, and you want to make a change say 
to the height of the waveguide. Uh, when you make that change, it's going to carry it through the entire timeline. Uh, so you can work one variable at a time uh, and really easily optimize things without having to deal with every time you change something, it breaks everything else. So this is a really good way, I think, to model waveguides. If you have to do it um, manually, if you don't have something like ComSol uh, to automatically go through and optimize it for you, it's not too bad this way. So uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.